makes a person want to kill? A new book reveals some may be born that way. It is called The Anatomy of Violence, The Biological Roots of Crime. Adrian Rain is the author. He's a professor of criminology and psychiatry at the University of Pennsylvania. Welcome. Good morning, Charlie. Biological factors that tend towards making a young person violent. Yes. Exactly. It's not just the social environment. There's genes, there's biological factors like a low resting heart rate and factors really early on in life that can raise the odds that a kid could become a criminal like a mum who smokes during pregnancy, takes alcohol or poor nutrition even during pregnancy. We know that these early factors predispose some little innocent kids mm. to become violent criminal offenders. So everybody who may have that biological factor and who doesn't become violent, what's the difference in those that do and those that don't? They probably have protective factors. I mean, I was an antisocial kid myself with some of the biological risk factors for crime, but I had a loving family. I had a very secure home environment, and I think, you know, all you need is love, like the Beatles said, <laughs> that, you know, that's one of the factors that can buffer a predisposed child biologically to becoming a criminal offender. And you became interested in the topic, Adrian, because you were a crime victim yourself. You woke up in the middle of the night, there's someone standing in your room. That's right. And you and end up he, getting your throat slammed. That's right, got my throat cut. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm a scientist here looking at these early factors that make us, you know, some of us more antisocial and criminal. Um, and so at some level, I think, well, should we cut some of these offenders a bit of a break, you know, because they're not responsible for the mother drinking during but pregnancy. But you look at the brain. But you look at the brain as well, and you see that the frontal region of the brain is just not functioning well in murderers. The part of the brain that's involved in planning, regulation in like, like the brakes on behavior you know if the brakes are worn on the car runs out of control so you studied the brains of 41 killers and what specific did you find that are similarities between these brains that well, frontal lobe part yes exactly as a group the very frontal region of the brain is just not working well like the guardian angel on behavior the part that you know controls our emotions when we get angry we want to lash out it's the frontal cortex that puts the brake on that. That's worn out. We also found that the emotional part of the brain in some psychopathic offenders, cold-blooded mm -hmm. killers, that emotion part is shrunken. That's the part that gives us the fear of punishment. That's the part that gives us the feeling for what's right and wrong. These psychopaths don't have those feelings, well, and that's why they do You what know what do. some people worry about. They worry that people will say, I'm not responsible for my own actions. It's mm -hmm. biological. Mm -hmm. That's one side of this neurocriminology sword. It's going to be an excuse. That's one of the fears that we have. You know, where goes responsibility if we say, look, it's in the brain. It's factors beyond the individual's control. But, you know, a baby that has fetal alcohol syndrome, it wasn't responsible for its mother drinking. That baby is 19 times more likely to be convicted as an adult. Wow. You know, to what extent, you know, are we going to ignore these early health and biological factors that make a difference? Mm -hmm. Thank you.